Cloudcode is the best programming agent in my humble opinion. I've been using it since it dropped. I actually was at the Cloudcode conference and seeing the announcement drop. I saw it drop live. And ever since then, I've been using it every single day. And I wanted to give you guys a short, quick tutorial on how to get started, how to use it, and what I think about the programming agent world right now as we speak. Cloud Code has really shifted the way I look and think about things and even how I use these tools. Now, to get started, it's pretty simple. All you really have to do is run this command, npm install dash g, and you run at anthropic dash ai slash cloud code. Now, here's the thing. You can use cloud code with any IDE, VS Code, JetBrains, Cursor, Windsurf, Zed. It works with anything. Although with Zed, there are some features I realized weren't working properly, but I'm sure it'll be fixed by the time this video goes live. And literally all you do is cd into your project directory, and then you type the command Claude. Now, in terms of pricing, you can either subscribe. It used to be just the max plans, but now they've added Claude code in the $17 a month plan. But you can also use the API more as a pay as you go type vibe. So whatever makes sense for you. But at $17 a month, it's an easy entry. Great, great price point for you to test. Now, I just want to dive in a project and show you how I use Claude code. So I have a new terminal. I'm just going to type in Claude. And then this interface pops up. Now, there's something cool about Claude code where it has context into which page you're in. So right now I'm on page.tsx and it knows that I'm in page.tsx. So if I ask, tell me what this page is doing, it because it knows what page I'm on, it's going to extract the information. It's going to look at the code from this page and tell me exactly what's going on. So it says this is the home landing page component. It displays a centered hero section with the title lock screen AI, description text and generating Apple passes for communities, two action buttons that link to dashboard and dashboard slash create a hero image. This mess, this page serves as a main entry point. So you get the idea. Now what's cool is just like with any of the IDEs like cursor and windsurf, I can type an at and I can specify a specific file. Like for example, I can do at middleware, explain what this file is doing. So I can go to specific file and ask, I can also tag specific files and ask. So it tells me authentication protection, invitation flow, public routes and route ma matching. Now, where does cloud code shine? Cloud code shines in big code bases or already existing code bases that you're not familiar with. I can't tell you how fast it's been for me to onboard onto new code bases with cloud code. I'll just ask it, explain to me the flow. How does this page work? How does this component work? Well, how does this app work? It can help you onboard into code bases so much faster. And I can see this for companies and teams being valuable. Or even if you're someone who's a contractor, freelancer, or you're joining a new company, definitely make sure you ask for a cloud code subscription. So I actually have a bug on an application I'm working on and I want to show you how I'm going to fix this with cloud code. So I should be able, this is an Apple pass. I should be able to delete this, but for some reason I can't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to cloud code and I'm going to go tag the page because I know what route this is in. This is in the slash dashboard route. So I'm going to do dashboard. I'm going to do dashboard slash page.tsx. So I'm going to say in this page um, as an admin, I should be able to delete passes. But for some reason, I don't see the deleting the delete button. Now, non admins should not be able to delete. But as an admin, I should be able to delete simple generic prompt, basically explaining the functionality I want. And now you're going to see cloud code work in action. Now real quick while it's working, quick praise break. I could call him in the morning. I could call him in the middle of the night. I could call him in the morning. I could call him in the middle of the night. I could call him in the morning. I could call him in the middle of the night. And when I call him, he'll make everything alright. It does not matter how Wow, Jesus promised he'll take care of me. So we see that again, this is a true agent. It continues to iterate on the task. Now it says the service side delete pass function is correctly using check pass delete permission. Let me fix the delete pass component to remove the client side admin check since the certified function already handles permissions properly. Okay, so it's asking me, do I want it to make this edit? I can say yes. 
I can say yes and don't ask again, meaning just keep on reiterating. Or if I think it's going the wrong direction, I could tell it no and tell it why. This is why I love it. So I'm going to click yes. This makes sense to me. So it's making edits to the code. It'll show you here also how many tokens are being used. Now it says, now the delete button will always be shown and the permission check is handled server side. So let's go back and yeah, I can see the delete button there and I can delete passes. So it fixed that bug for me. Now I told it here that even though the server side check works, I want the button to not show, the delete button to not show for non-admins. So it said, you're absolutely right, the UI should be smart and showing and hiding the delete button based on the actual permissions. Let me implement a proper solution. Now, I took Claude's um, advice where it says encourage deep thinking, deeper thinking, so I, I told it to think about it. And you can see it's starting to work and you can see a diff view here, meaning it's showing you the code that it's written. And we can see the task that it's implemented. So it's checked, list all passes function to understand the current data structure. Now, I'm actually going to say yes and don't ask this session. So I'm going to let it rip and see if it actually works, if it actually builds this functionality out properly. Put your friends, make you sing, put your friends down. Put your phone down. Put your phone down. Go to worship, go to worship in the same clothes. So it says it is done. It wants to run a build. I will just say, yeah, I'll say yes, run a build. Fine. It's cool with me. We'll let it run a build. And last you see that it's last task is test and commit changes and it actually wants to commit the changes. So we'll let it do that. So git add, git commit. And this is the commit message. Looks good to me. And it wants to push these changes. Yes, proceed. And as you can see here, the PR has been made with the right descriptions. I can review the code. I'll just create this pull request real quick. And what's awesome is, again, I have a code rabbit, which also can review this code. And we're just living in a time where using agents for your workflow in whatever field makes sense. And yeah, I've been having a good time with Claude Code. Now, there's some other common tasks that Anthropic uh, suggests. Uh, like, for example, we, we automated Git operations. We made a code edit. But testing, writing tests, nobody likes writing tests. But we should write tests. Maybe this is a good way for you to use Claude code. And it says, encourage deeper thinking. For complex problems, explicitly ask Claude to think more deeply. Right? So this is the first time that I've seen true agentic coding. And this is why Claude code has been my favorite programming uh, agent. I actually canceled my Windsurf cursor subscriptions. I am strictly using... Uh, Claude code. And then if I want to, let's say, use the chat for Z, I've been using Z right now. I have an API key. I'll just plop the API key and use that. And it's been a fun time. And that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you give Claude code a spin. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.